Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top and beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this spectacularly gorgeous, I think soon to be 75 degree <coughs> day here on Tuesday morning, December 3rd, here in the heart of Texas. In the postcard perfect heart of Texas on the planet in the closing days of 2019. And my name is Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little sidekick, Sancho Panza. <clears throat> we need to get out there, and I got my gas-sucking lawnmower fixed yesterday. So for the first time in six months, I need to get out there and mow the Amazon rainforest down in my yard. But before I do that on this gorgeous day, do what I do every day. And that is bringing you today's Chronicle of the Collapse. I have had, I think, four <coughs> listeners uh, send me this uh, article by a fellow who I've never heard of, Kevin Casey. And two people have asked me, uh, Sam, is this book hermit? Uh, I don't know. I do not know Kevin Casey. He is an environmental journalist out of Australia. Now, the mysterious book hermit claims, I believe, to live in, uh, where do you live? Claims to live in Seattle, Washington. So I don't know if Kevin Casey is book hermit or not. But anyway, uh, <coughs> I am sure if Book Hermit is, does not know Kevin Casey, uh, Kevin Casey will be Book Hermit's newest hero. So we are going, there, there's, there's several versions of this uh, excellent essay floating around the Doomosphere. This one... I don't know if this is where it originally started or not from an outfit called Global Comment. Global Comment, where the world thinks out loud. And Kevin Casey's thinking out loud with this uh, essay they've titled uh, Global Comment. It has different titles where you find it, uh, but they titled it why Climate Change is an Irrelevance, Economic Growth is a Myth, and Sustainability is 40 Years Too Late. Okay, take it away, Kevin. I need to get Kevin on the, uh, on the show to see if he is or is not Book Hermit. So take it away, Kevin Casey and or Book Hermit. <clears throat> As someone who has been exploring the world's most isolated wilderness regions for nearly half a century, I have some insights into the state of the planet and the human race's current environmental befuddlement. I have watched the condition <clears throat> of the Earth plummet before my eyes within my own lifespan to the extent that I no longer recognize it as the beautiful, diverse supporter of all life it once was. So let me start by addressing a few key points of confusion that seem to affect both keen activists and head-in-the-sand deniers in equal measure. Okay, and here we go. Climate change is not the biggest threat to the world's environment. We are. Thank you. The world's rivers and seas are not choked with floating piles of rubbish, toxic chemicals, and plastic waste because of 
climate change. They are that way because we have 7.7 .7 billion people crammed onto a planet that is dying under the pressure of our greedy, selfish abuse. Two decades from now, the Earth's oceans are on target to contain more plastic in them by weight than fish. Climate change did not do that. Way too many people did that. <clears throat> Climate change has not <clears throat> covered the world with concrete or replaced healthy ecosystems with canal estates and shopping malls. We and our ever-increasing numbers are the culprit. Climate change is only one of many symptoms of an out-of-control disease. Human overpopulation. The irreversible environmental damage stemming from having too many people on a finite planet is already painfully evident. Our bloated population is diminishing our children's futures in ways that have very little to do with the planet's temperature. I keep hearing people say, Humans have always found a way to solve difficult problems, so don't worry, it will all work itself out. Alas, the problem the Earth faces now is one it has never dealt with before, a plague of nearly 8 billion humans. It cannot cope anymore. We have been so distracted making money, embracing our agendas, and spreading myths about growth and progress that we forgot to notice. We have turned our only viable planetary home into a spherical garbage dump. Humans may be impressively intelligent, but they are also profoundly self-focused and short-sighted. <clears throat> no politician talks about our population epidemic. All you hear from them is jobs, 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 and more growth. You do not hear climate change activists talking about overpopulation either. It is too dangerous a subject, too painful a reality. It permanently occupies the too hard basket. <clears throat> Instead, we have all jumped on the global warming bandwagon. We stridently blame governments for lack of action on climate change while secretly hoping that whatever they decide to do does not adversely affect our consumer lifestyle. <clears throat> Let's not confuse activism with action. They are not the same. One is about social inclusion and feeling, a, feeling good about your outrage. <clears throat> the other is about doing something tangible to make things better. I hate to burst this old school bubble, but there is no longer such a thing as economic growth. Not in this century. There is no true sustainability either. Not anymore. <coughs> the environmental tipping point everyone loves to talk about 
was actually reached around 1980 when science tells us that humanity began to consume more of the Earth's resources than the planet could possibly regenerate. We have gobbled up more of our planet's resources in the past 50 years than in all of previous human history combined and polluted our way to prosperity in the process. Climate change had nothing to do with any of that and still doesn't. Economic growth needs population growth to sustain itself. But when a depleted planet can no longer carry the burden of an existing population and its endless demands, growth is nothing but a dangerous illusion. Today's healthy economy is tomorrow's dystopian misery. In this century, what we still mistakenly call economic growth is environmental destruction, pure and simple. Nothing we do today can be called sustainable <coughs> on a planet that has already endured four solid decades of irreplaceable resource use. The 1970s were the last sustainable decade for mankind. Unfortunately, at that time, no one took notice that a tipping point had been reached and passed. Our current environmental woes have almost nothing to do with the climate and everything to do with how we have been treating the earth. Not just recently, but for many centuries. We have always abused the earth horribly and managed to get away with it because our numbers were not significant enough to cause lasting damage. Now our numbers are out of control and that presents us with limited options. In hindsight, we should have, had, we should have addressed rampant overpopulation shortly after World War II when the global population was still around two and a half billion, less than one-third of what it is today. But we were in the midst of our jubilant post-war optimism and still believed in the delusion of nature's endless, endless bounty. If you could go back in time to around 1604 to spot where Manhattan now sits, you would see a tiny settlement of about 150 people enjoying a pristine coastal wilderness with superb growing soil, ample wildlife, and rich timber forest, a genuine paradise on earth. Back then, whales would wander up the clean, fish-rich Hudson River, and you could pull lobsters out of the sea as long as a man. Huge flocks of passenger pigeons blackened the sky. Today, that same place is wall-to-wall -wall concrete with one of the highest human population densities on Earth. We have been so busy improving things that we have destroyed practically everything. In the end, our legacy as a species 
will not be about all the wonderful things we have created while we have occupied the earth. It will be about all the wonderful things we have destroyed. The most astounding explosion of human population in history happened on my generation's watch. So we need to take ownership of that lack of foresight. Our own children are now paying the price for our blunders and have every right to be worried about the Earth's future and theirs. But let's not heap all the blame on us baby boomers. Previous generations helped the planet's degradation along just as blindly, and today's young people still expect the sort of prosperous lifestyle that a dying planet can now only provide in the very short term. <clears throat> so, I would patiently urge all climate change activists to direct their environmental concerns at those who really deserve it. They can start <coughs> they can start with the economist, developers and politicians who blissfully believe that the status quo of perpetual growth still works. <coughs> They can then move on to the religious zealots who still spout the mantra of man's dominion over nature and abhor the idea of contraceptives. After that, they can apportion a hefty dose of blame to the world leaders who purposefully sidestep the overpopulation issue like the political hot potato it is, despite the fact that it is killing our planet and robbing future generations of the spectacular biodiversity and viable ecosystems that older generations took for granted. <clears throat> and finally, they can look in the mirror and ask themselves what they are personally doing besides protesting in the streets to make their planet a better place for all the life that dwells on it. <clears throat> what are the solutions to an overcrowded planet? Firstly, to stop getting sidetracked by the climate change industry and recognize that the problem is our sheer numbers and blatant disregard for our planet's health, not the climate. We must replace political and economic agendas and warped ideologies with better education, especially in science. We need more global promotion of family planning, more female empowerment, and government incentives to have fewer children, not more children. And sadly, we should have been proactive about all this stuff at least 60 years ago instead of just waking up to our self-inflicted predicament now. While it is reassuring that today's young people are increasingly aware of the seriousness of the environmental plight, they are protesting up the wrong tree. They should <coughs> direct their passionate attention to the real enemy, a greedy, arrogant, two-legged species that is in furious denial and has become far too adept 
at making excuses for the inexcusable. There you go. I think we need to get Kevin Casey on the show, ask him if he is Book Hermit, and obviously ask Kevin Casey if he is a father. And uh, so anyway, guys, just for the record, I want you to understand that Sam Mitchell 100% agrees with every single thing that Kevin Casey said in that essay. 100% agreement. Now, what I want to find out from Kevin is does he think that climate change in 20, starting in about 20 years, will uh, become, you know, a much bigger problem. Uh, you know, climate change is one of nine planetary boundaries. One of nine. And right now, <clears throat> I agree with Kevin <coughs> and or book hermit that cl I would put climate change of the nine boundaries probably in uh, probably in right now going into 2020 if, if this was a horse race you know into the apocalypse which is exactly what it is that climate change right now is probably at the back of the pack but uh, if the eight horses of the apocalypse do not get us climate change over, certainly by the end of the century, that climate change will just, uh, you, you know, mop up whatever the other eight horses of the apocalypse did not get to. And climate change as uh, Kevin so eloquently pointed out, is just one, one symptom that you can blame on too many people. But anyway, I need to wrap up uh, today's chronicle of the collapse because it is a spectacularly gorgeous uh, I think 75 degree day in December. Uh, make your own comments about climate change with that. And I have a gas sucking lawnmower in the back of my gas sucking truck to pull out of that truck and get to mowing down the Amazon rainforest in my own backyard. <coughs> And, uh, oh yes, if you did enjoy this uh, video, please spend a few seconds to thumb it up. Or even if you did not enjoy this video, please spend a few seconds to thumb it down. And if you would like to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles, by all means, come on board. We would love to have you. <clears throat> and get out there and enjoy what's left of this planet while you still can. Bye, guys.